بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إن شاء الله today we will start the first part of the book that we plan to go through which is called تعظيم uh, العلم or respecting knowledge making knowledge great in one's heart and I'll start with the preamble of the author insha'Allah and then we'll go into the introduction and maybe the first chapter so he starts with Alhamdulillahi al-mu'addim bit-tawheed wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasoolihi muhammadin al-makhsusu bi-ajilli al-mazid wa ala alihi wa sahbihi uri al-fadli wa al-ra'i al-sadeed amma ba'd so he starts with the bismillah in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful all praise be to Allah who is glorified and sanctified with Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he sends the praises and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was um, blessed with certain unique properties. And he sent it upon his family and his companions who are of the strongest of knowledge and opinion. So this is the sunnah of the Book of Allah and the Messenger of the Prophet Sallallahu Any time a person wants to start a speech or start a book or start something important, it is befitting that he starts with the Bismillah. And Bismillah in the Arabic language means in the name of Allah. However, there is something that's implied in it, which means as we say that Bismillahi abda'u. You know, in the name of Allah, I start. And that's how the book of Allah starts with the Bismillah. Surah Al-Fatiha starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right? Anytime you say Bismillah, it's, you're having an implied verb with it. So when you say Bismillah before you eat, you're, you're, you're implying Bismillahi akru. You know, in the name of Allah, I am eating. In the name of Allah, you know, I get into my car. In the name of Allah, I start my affairs. So this is, you know, also derived from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ who said that any uh, great matter that doesn't have the remembrance of Allah or the mentioning of Allah in it, it is like destroyed or vacated or missing. Right? So the sunnah of the ulama and the scholars of Islam is to always start something important with the Bismillah. And then he goes to Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And Mu'addim bit Tawheed, the one who was made great with the Tawheed, his oneness. Alhamd, praise, is basically uh, something that is you're, you're sending praise upon because of it in of itself, right? It's different from shukr. Shukr means thankfulness. So when you praise someone or something, you're praising it because of a characteristic or characteristics in that thing, in and of itself, without them having done anything for you. So if you see something beautiful and you praise it, that's alhamd, right? But shukr is usually with muqabil, meaning that somebody did something for you and you thank him for it, you know, or you thank her for it. Like they gave you something or they helped you with something. You say shukran, that means thanks. Praise is in, you're just praising the person for the characteristic that's in that person. Like you see an athlete, a star athlete, and you say like, wow, he's so fast or he's so strong or something like that. He has done nothing for you, he's not giving you anything, but you're praising him for some characteristic in him. Or the ulama, how knowledgeable they are. Right? This is the, the, the praise, alhamd. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the all-great, the all-wise, the all-perfect. He is the most deserving of praise. He gives us everything. He's deserving of praise and shukr, alhamd and shukr. But we praise Him just in of Himself. He deserves praise just for His being. right? And then He, he offers, He says, Al-Mu'addin bit tawheed the one who is made great by tawheed. He is unique. He is one. Allah is samad. Lam yilid wa lam yulid. He was not born, nor did He give birth. There is nothing like to him, unto him. Laysa kimithlihi shay. Wa huwa samiyu al-basir. He is the all-seeing, the all-hearing. He knows everything. Ya'lamu ma kana wa ma ka'in wa ma lam yakun lo kana kayfa yakun. He knows what was and what is and what will be and what wasn't if it was how it would be. His knowledge is perfect. He is the one who gives us everything. Our sustenance, our health, our families our wealth, everything we have is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He is deserving of praise and He is unique in His Lordship. He is un- unique in His ability to govern the universe. You know, He needs nothing and we need everything. 
He is sufficient in of himself, right? So that's why he is unique in Tawheed and he is the one who is deserving of being worshipped alone. And then the author, he sends his praise and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasulihi Muhammadin al maqsusu bi ajadli al mazid The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, the bakhil is the one man dhukira anduhu wa lam yusalli alayhi. The selfish one or the stingy one is the one who is, he hears the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he does not send us the, 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 the salutations upon him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, man salla alayhi wahidan, sallallahu alayhi ashra. Whoever sends his blessings or his, makes dua for the Prophet Sallallahu says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time, Allah will send ten blessings upon you, right? So it's a no-brainer that if you hear the Prophet Sallallahu name mentioned to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it costs you nothing and it gives you such a great reward. And it's deserving because look at all the effort the Prophet Sallallahu did in spreading the deen. Look how much the Prophet Sallallahu suffered in, in passing to us this religion, right? What he went through. And he never complained. And he never made dua against his people. You know, even though they rejected him, he was from the, uh, you know, noble families. He was considered the trustworthy one. You know, he never spoke a lie, and he came to try to save people from the hellfire and teach them what is good for them. And they threw stones at him. They humiliated him. You know, they looked down upon him, and yet he was patient. And he called them to tawheed, and he called them to Islam, to that which will free them from the hellfire, right? So all the good that comes after him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was a result of his efforts and his teaching. Of you know, upon us, and that's why he has the maqam Mahmud, the high level in paradise. And he is one of the Uli al Azam min al Rusul, the five greatest prophets, and the Khatim al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, the seal of the prophets, right? It says, Al Makhsus bi Ajal Mazid. The Prophet said, he has some unique characteristics. Can anybody give me some of them? Unique for the Prophet Muhammad. Why is our Prophet unique? Ya Ummat al Islam. Yes, one of the unique qualities of the Prophet is that he was sent to all of mankind, whereas the previous uh, prophets were sent to their particular people. Yani, so, Rahmatun lil Alameen, he's a mercy to the whole of the world. He was sent to everybody. Right. What else? Naam, the, the Masjid. The Prophet said that, Ju'ilali al Aldu Masjidun. The, the Prophet said that earth was made for him, for our Ummah of Islam. We can pray anywhere. We don't need a special synagogue or church or, or mosque. We can pray wherever you know, we, 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 we are, are able to on the earth. And also the earth is a form of purification. So if there's not you know, water available, you can make tiyammum to, to make the, the you know, wiping with the dust. What else? Yes, he's the final messenger. The final revelation came with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, he will make the intercession on the Day of Judgment. He will start the Day of Judgment. He will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to start. And he will make intercession for the Ummah of, of Islam. MashaAllah. Good. Anything else? There's a, lot of, there's a couple of other things, but... Yes. Yes, he's the ultimate final prophet. There will be no prophets after Muhammad. In the belief of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, that Isa, the Prophet Jesus, will come back to complete his life before the Day of Judgment. But he will follow the Sharia of Muhammad. So, in terms of revelation, that's the final revelation, the final call, like they say. <laughs> yeah. But he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has certain names and attributes too that are specific for him in that sense, you know, like how he is uh, the, the one that will wipe away al-mahi, the, the previous um, deviations or, 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 you know, misguidances. He is the uh, rahmatan, ra'uf rahim, the merciful, gentle one to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is be sent, you know, as a uh, glad tidings to the world. And the Qur'an, which is the final revelation he delivered in his language. Um, he was from the children of Ismail, who was a child of Ibrahim. You know, the, all the prophets descended from Ishaq, from Abraham. 
there was so many for the children of Israel that had these prophets. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the one prophet that came from uh, the descendants of Ismail. And this was something that's mentioned sometimes uh, in the, even in the current uh, Bible, you know, some of the God tidings that was given to the other son of Abraham, which is Ismail. And, and, and the place that would, even the, ma- the name Kaaba or, or Mecca is mentioned, you know, Becca. Um, so these are some of the qualities that were unique for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these, uh, the way of the, the scholars is always to try to start the speeches of the books with this praising of, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Salat was Salam ala Rasulillah. Then he goes, أَمَّا بَعَدْ فَهَذِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِي تَعْدِيمُ الْعِلْمِ خُلَاسَةُ اللَّفْظِ عِدَّتْ بِتَقَاطِعُهَا لِمَقْصِدِ الْحِفْظِ فَاسْتُخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ لِلْمَنْفَعَ الْمَذْكُورُ لِلْلُّ الْبَابِ وَجُعِلَ فِيهِ الْأَمُّذِجْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابِ لِيَكُونُ فِي نُفُوسِ الطَّلَبَةَ شَمْسَ النَّهَارِ وَيَتَرَشَّحُ بَعْدُهُ إِلَى الْعَمْلِ وَالْأَدْتَكَارِ فَأَسْأَلَ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَهُمْ لُزُومُ مَعَاقِدِ التَّعْذِيمِ وَفَوْزُ بِجَوَاعِمِ فِي فَضْلِهِ الْعَظِيمِ So he says that this book, Ta'deem al he is um, intended with it to be a summarized book. Which with um, simple phrases, and he intended for the students to memorize the whole book, you know. But w- it's not necessary to memorize the book. But if you can understand, there's 20 chapters in this book. They're small chapters, you know, from a page to two pages. And if you can memorize each of the headlines of the chapters, that would be, inshallah, a good thing. And these are chapters or points of uh, recommendations for the students of knowledge, right? On how to seek knowledge, how to Hold knowledge great in your hearts. And this was his goal from this book, you know, to make it easy for the students to make it, uh, to have a respect of knowledge. Because, you know, as time has passed, the unfortunately respect of knowledge has decreased, right? Ilm of the deen of Islam, al kitab, wa sunnah, was something that we should all study and learn so that we can go cl- closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a form of ibadah, you know, a form of worship. And it should be considered always a form of worship because you're learning the basics of your deen, how to love Allah and the Messenger and practice the deen of Islam. Right? But unfortunately, as time has progressed, it became an academic subject, you know, whereas people don't hold the knowledge of Islam great in their hearts as they used to. You know, to have a, a halaqa of dhikr, of remembrance of Allah, to learn the Quran, to learn the hadith, it was something the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and Tabi Tabi'een and those after them that they held it so dearly in their heart. It was something so great. They would like wash up and wear their best clothes and, and you know, look forward to, 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 to learning something new about the deen, right? It wasn't just some type of academic subject that you can quote a hadith or quote an ayah, but you have no action upon it. Or you have no respect for it, you know. You, the imam here is saying that we, he has written this book so that he can bring back this ta'deem of ilm, to have this sanctity or respect or holding knowledge great in your heart. And this is one of the reasons he did it. And the ones who um, have this in their heart, he says that the light of the um, sun will shine upon them, basically. The light of knowledge, the sunlight of knowledge will shine upon this person. The more you hold knowledge great in your heart, the more light will come from, from the knowledge upon you. Right? And this is one of the goals of the imam. And then he says, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for himself and for us, to um, establish these advices that he's about to give us in our hearts so that we may succeed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bountiful blessings. You know, when we learn this knowledge, we learn how to appreciate knowledge and we act upon it, inshallah, it will be a means to achieve blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the goal, one of the goals of this imam. Hafidhullah. So that's just the preamble. Um, and we'll start, um, he starts in his sharh actually, like when he, he explained this book to students in, in Medina, I believe, with the hadith uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu And it's called the hadith al awwalin like the, the first hadith of narr- narrating. It says, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, فَالرَّحِمُونَ يَرْحَمُمُهُ اللَّهِ اِرْحَمْ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَرْحَمُكُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ The rahimun, the, the ones who have mercy, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah will have mercy upon them The more mercy you have The more 
mercy Allah has upon you. And then he says, have mercy upon those in the earth and Allah, the one in the sky, will have mercy upon you. Right? So this hadith is special in the sense it's called the awwalin. Like if it was the first time I said a hadith to you, I can quote it. Like I got it from my shaykh, who got it from his shaykh, the first hadith he heard from his shaykh, all the way back to the Prophet So, you know, uh, in general, if I was to give you my, the first time you heard a hadith from me, I would say this hadith, and then you can narrate the hadith from me. I have the chain of narration going from my shaykh all the way back to the Prophet but I think you've heard from me a hadith before, so it, it technically won't apply. But I thought it would be beneficial that to mention it, to show um, the sanad to the Prophet ﷺ, and also the, the meaning that the Imam was explaining in his sharh and his explanation, that this mercy, the greatest of mercies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have upon you, is to guide you to knowledge of his deen. Right? And some of the greatest mercies from a person to offer to another person is to help facilitate that guidance, to help teach the person their deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, yani, the knowledgeable people are the inheritors of the Prophets. Al-Anbiya lam yarithu dirham wala dinar. The, the Prophets did not leave behind um, gold or, or silver, but they left knowledge. فَمَنْ أَخِذَ بِهِ أَخِذَ بِحَظٍ wafir. So whoever takes from it has taken a great portion, a great gift. Right? So the mercy of a teacher to a student Learning something about the deen is one of the greatest mercies a person can have upon the earth. You know. And we mentioned last time that when a student goes to seek knowledge, the fish in the sea and the ants in the ground and the angels in the sky, they all make dua for you. you know. Any path of knowledge you go to, if you make your intention correct, you know, whether it be coming in here, inshallah, we have the intention to increase ourselves in knowledge, you know, reading a book, these are all paths that take you to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have all these angels and ants and angels and other people making dua for you. Right? What great reward is that? And especially when you come together and study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, study knowledge together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends down His mercy upon you. And He sends down the angels to wrap you up in their wings. Right? And sakina, peacefulness, comes into your hearts. These are all gifts from seeking the knowledge. It's all the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more we study about our deen, the more we can attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you learn about His mercy upon us and how to be merciful to the creation. Right? And from the greatest of mercies is seeking knowledge. Then he starts his muqaddima. You know, that was just the preamble saying why he wrote this book, basically so it can be a guide for the students of knowledge. You know, some of the adab the manners and the reasons of, of, of seeking knowledge and how to um, you know, make it great in our hearts again as it should be because it's a, the art form that was left behind you know, it's, it's unfortunately like in the past some people would travel months just to get one hadith you know, they would really have, hold their teachers in high regard because they're teaching something that will save you from the hellfire they're teaching you how to live a good life, a correct life you know, so they held the teachers in such high regard, in such high, high respect like their parents, basically. He had a love and respect of them like they have for their parents. And sometimes even more so. Because the parents, they take care of you, you know, nurture you physically and emotionally. But the ulama, they nourish you spiritually. They help to save your soul. Right? If you have the, 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 the emotional and the physical, but you lack the spiritual, it's not sufficient. So the ulama, they deserve our respect and our, our love and our, res you know, holding them in highest standards, what we should be doing. Um, the respect for knowledge, like I said, you know, the Sahaba, when they heard the Prophet them talking, they would be quiet and listen attentively. When they heard the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reciting, they would be quiet and listen to learn and benefit. The scholars in the past, when they teach, it was like the students had... Um, you know, birds upon them. They, the, the birds can come and sit upon their, their shoulders because they were so intent of learning and so eager and so quiet and so respectful. Right. You know, as time passed, unfortunately, a lot of this respect in this ta'deem of ilm was taken away and students started having a lack of respect for the ulama, a lack of respect of knowledge. It became like an academic subject like math or science or any other subject. You know, it wasn't a big deal anymore. You know. And that's why you see the fitna that happened to the Muslim ummah. One of the reasons. So he goes on, Alhamdulillahi wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi adada man ta'allama wa allama. In the introduction, 
again, Bismillah rahman rahim and then Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he says the kalimat of Tawheed, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi adada man ta'allama wa allama. He's saying that he sends a, you know, testifying to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messengership of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sends his peace and blessings upon um, the Prophet and those, his family, the honorable household and those who follow them, the amount of anything they ever learned. Adada man ta'allama wa allama. Whoever learned and whoever taught. So imagine every single thing that's been learned from the beginning of time until now. Everything that was ever taught from the beginning of time until now. How many times is that? It's countless. So he's saying, may Allah send his peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ and his family and his companions this many times. فَإِنَّ حَظَّ الْعَبْدِ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَوْقُوفٌ عَلَى حَظِّ قَلْبِهِ مِنْ تَعْظِيمِهِ وَإِجْلَالِهِ He's saying that the portion of a servant's attainment of knowledge is directly related to the how he holds that knowledge in his heart, how he sanctifies that knowledge. فَمَنْ تَلَى قَلْبُهُ بِتَعْظِيمِ الْعِلْمِ وَإِجْلَالِهِ صُلِحَ أَنْ يَكُونُ مُحَنًّا لَهُ وَبِقَدْرِ نُقْصَانِ هَيْبَتِهِ الْعِلْمِ هَيْبَتِ الْعِلْمِ فِي الْقَلْبِ يَنْقُصُ حَذُّ الْعَبْدِ مَحَلُّ لَهُ So he's saying that the person who, the more respect you have for knowledge, the more you hold knowledge great in your heart, um, the greater portion of knowledge will come into your heart. And the opposite is true. The less you respect knowledge, the less you show um, how knowledge is great in your heart, the less knowledge you will be able to hold in your heart. حَتَّى يَكُونُ مِنَ الْقُلُوبِ قَلْبٌ لَيْسَ فِيهِ شَيْنٌ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ To the point if a person disrespects knowledge uh, so much so that he will have no knowledge in his heart whatsoever. So the more you, have, you hold this knowledge great, the more you respect it, the more you care about it, the more knowledge you will get. Right? And then the opposite is true. If you disrespect knowledge, you don't hold it great. It's like any other science, who cares? Some people, they will, you know, their whole point of learning is to argue. Um, some people, just so they can quote and, lo- and show off that they're knowledgeable. You know, these people, if, regardless of how much they can quote to you, but they don't have real knowledge in their hearts, and, and, and they will be punished for that. You know, like three of the first people they get thrown in the hellfire is a scholar, a person who spends apparently in the cause of Allah, and a mujahid or a warrior fighting for the cause of Allah. All three of them, these are three of the best acts that you can do. They all did it for other than the sake of Allah, to show off. And they will be the first thrown into the hellfire. So always you know, have your niyyah, your intention, that you're doing it for the sake of Allah. فَمَنْ عَذَّمَ الْعَلْمِ لَاحَتْ أَنْوَارُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَوَفَّدَتْ رُسُلُ الْفُنُونُهُ إِلَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لِهَمَّتِهِ غَايَةٌ إِلَّا تَلَقِّيهِ وَلَا لِنَفْسِهِ لَذَّةٌ إِلَّا الْفِكْرُ فِيهِ وَكَأَنَّ أَبَا مُحَمَّدَ الدَّارِمِي الْحَافِظِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ لَمَحَ هَذَا الْمَعْنَى فَخَتَمَ كِتَابِ الْعِلْمِ مِنْ سُنَّتِهِ الْمُسَمَّى بِالْمُسْنَدِ الْجَامِعِ بِبَابٍ فِي إِعْظَامِ الْعِلْمِ so he says that from the greatness or making knowledge great in your heart will come upon, light will shine upon you. And the, the knowledge will send its messengers to you from its different uh, funun, its different categories. Like the more you respect knowledge, the more you hold knowledge great, the more knowledge will give you. Right? The more ability you will have to understand the deen and explain the deen. And he says that it becomes to the point that your greatest concern is seeking knowledge. And your greatest pleasure is thinking about knowledge and understanding knowledge, you know. The more a person he trains himself to like read and be patient and sitting with the scholars and understanding the deen, the more knowledge will give you. Like the scholars used to say, you know, إِذَا تُعْتِي الْعِلْمَ كُلَّكِ يُعْتِيكَ بَعْضُ If you give knowledge all of yourself, all of your heart trying to attain it, it will give you some of it back. So imagine like the people that don't give anything to the knowledge and expect to be scholars, expect to you know, be so knowledgeable. You know, the scholars of the past, they would memorize the Qur'an you know, at a young age. They would memorize thousands of ahadith, the Arabic language, the 
fiqh, the principles of jurisprudence, all these things they would memorize and understand, and, and they would consider themselves students. Nowadays, like some people, they might watch a couple of lectures on YouTube and they start giving fatwas, and they start calling themselves scholars. You know, ta'adim al alm, having respect for knowledge, means knowing your place, knowing your level, and putting the scholars in their place. You know, they're not equal. Somebody that devoted their whole life that reads. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours a day that prays the Qiyam al every single night that traveled you know, far and wide sitting with the greatest scholars in, 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 in on the earth basically is not equal to somebody that put in the work you know, you can't putting them as equals is, is, a, is a disrespect to knowledge and he's saying that the Imam al-Darimi Muhammad al-Darimi Hafizullah or Rahimahullah al-Hafiz one of the great scholars of hadith, he has a sunan called uh, Jami al Musnad, and uh, some call it uh, Sunan al Darimi, one of the works of uh, compilations of hadith. He ended his book with I'adham al Alm, making knowledge great, holding knowledge great in your heart. And the Imam here, uh, Shaykh Saleh al Usaymi, is saying that you know, maybe this Imam had that in his intention when he ended his book with this chapter, you know, encouraging all of us to hold knowledge great in our hearts. وَأَعْنُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى الْوَصُولِ إِلَى عِظَامِ الْعِلْمِ وَجْلَالِهِ مَعْرِفَةُ مَعَاقِدْ تَعْظِيمِ وَهِيَ الْأُصُولُ الْجَامِعَ الْمُحَقَّقَ لِعَظَمَةِ الْعِلْمِ فِي الْقَلْبِ He's saying that some of the most uh, helpful ways to um, achieve or attain this path of knowledge, making knowledge great in your heart, is to learn certain points and universal principles that scholars have put forth for us to attain it. And like I said, the Imam in his book, he put down basically 20 uh, main principles and explained them in, a, in, a, in less than you know a couple of pages each to understand these principles, to get closest and to make knowledge great in our hearts. فَمَنْ أَخَذَ بِهَا كَانَ مُعَدَّمْ لِلْعَلْمِ مُجَدٍ لَهُ وَمَنْ ضَيَّعَهَا فِي النَّفْسِ أَضَعَ وَلِيَهَوَاءِ الطَّاعَ فَلَا يُلُمَّنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسُ إِنَّ مِنْ فَتَرَ عَنْهُ إِلَّا نَفْسُهُ يُدَّاكُ أَوْ كَاتَ وَفُوكَ نَفَحَ وَنَفَخَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يُكْرِمِ الْعَلْمِ لَا يُكْرِمُهُ الْعَلْمِ He says that uh, whoever takes with these principles that he's about to teach, he is, uh, inshallah, will achieve the goal of making knowledge great in your heart. And whoever loses it, he has lost himself, basically. And he has no one better to blame than himself. Because when you, um, you know, if he's giving you the opportunity to show this is the correct way to respect knowledge and make knowledge great in your heart. These are from all the books I've studied and all the shiuch I sat under. I put for you a book together with 20 main principles that's less than 70 pages. If you study it and understand it and apply it, you will have knowledge great in your heart. It's like a gift from him to us. But if you just turn your back upon it, you don't care about it, you don't even apply yourself, then you have no one to blame except yourself. Right. And he goes on to um, explain in, in the larger explanation of his book when he's talking about it, to say why he made it you know, a smaller text as opposed to a greater text. Because in knowledge in general, you always start with the small before you get to the big. Right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted, he could have sent down you know, 20 volume work of the Quran that explains every single detail you know, from A to Z of every aspect of life. But he sent down a book that we can all read in a short amount of time. You know? And the, the, this book here, it's less you know, than it's 600 and odd, some odd pages. Right? And the sunnah of the Prophet said, and the hadith of the Prophet all together, it's contained. It's not that, you know, with the, without repetition of the hadith, it's not, not that, that many. It's something attainable anybody can read, you know. So the Prophet was giving with great meaning in, in small phrases. And in the past, like the scholars you say, that uh, the knowledge was great and the speech was little, right? But now it's like the opposite. The speech is much and the knowledge is little. You know, you find, like I said, it started with the Quran and the Sunnah. The Sahaba understood that and they were the greatest generation of the Islamic Ummah. They spread Islam throughout the world with that understanding. Right? As generations go on, you'll find knowledge per se, written knowledge, spoken knowledge, talking about it, writing it, is increased. But look at the fruits of it. 
you know, until this day. And Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, from the signs of the Day of Judgment is the decrease of knowledge. So nowadays we can pick up our phones and have every single book of hadith, the whole Qur'an, all the books of fiqh. But where's the knowledge? Where's the application of the knowledge? Right? In the past, they would have to walk months' journey to get one hadith, but look at the knowledge they had in their minds, in their hearts. Right? Because they have ta'deem of ilm. They had the appreciation of knowledge. So from the adab of students of knowledge, the adab of seeking knowledge is to always put the small before the big. You know, Learn the basics before you jump to the big, you know, long tombs of, of books. You know. And maybe, perhaps, just learning these small basics and applying them, you can achieve a lot more knowledge than someone who's read hundreds of volumes of books but doesn't apply it and doesn't understand it, doesn't memorize it. Right. So we're going to go through this book, inshallah, knowing the basic principles of making knowledge great in our hearts so we can appreciate knowledge and seeking knowledge. And then, inshallah, I hope to go through like a curriculum of smaller books that we can try to memorize and understand and apply it to our life. Like the next book I hope to go through is the Arbayn al by Imam al-Nawi. You know, the 40 hadith that has the main principles of uh, the deen in these 40 hadith. It's like that small book. And then maybe, inshallah, a basic book in aqidah, a basic book in fiqh. You know, inshallah, these basic books you put together and you build upon it. But if you ma master and memorize and understand in these basics, you will have a great success in the deen. All the scholars, like in general, it's not something new. Like the manhaj they've made for us is kind of clear. In hadith, what to study. In fiqh, what to study. In, in, in uh, usul of fiqh, what to study. In Arabic, what to study. All of them, they start with a small basic book then a medium book, and then an advanced book, right? If you master the small books though and really understand it, inshallah, that will give you the keys to all those other books. You have the main principles of Islam and you can go anywhere and, 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 and you know, any place, any time and understand your basics of the deen. You know, some people, they might read 20 books of hadith, but they don't have the basic understanding of the 40 hadith of Imam Nawi. And these are the principles of the deen. You know, somebody might have read the Fatah of Ibn Taymiyyah or Mughni ibn Qudama, but they don't, if you ask them, what is the sharut, what are the requirements of wudu? What are the requirements of salah? How can you tell that salat al-dhuhr is in without, you know, some people, I asked somebody, how, how can you tell dhuhr is in? He said, you just look at the prayer schedule. I said, no, that's not the point. <laughs> if you don't have the prayer schedule, how could you tell? This is like a basic question in fiqh that all Muslims should understand. You know, by the shadow, it's very simple. The Prophet ﷺ taught us how to do it. And so anyway, that's the idea, inshallah. And um, we'll continue with the first chapter. And each week I'll try to do one chapter or two chapters, and we'll finish the book in a relatively shorter time, inshallah. So this is the introduction. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, jazakumullah khairan. We'll stop here. Yeah. That's part of the goal. So each subject will have an application, inshallah. So for today's application, I'll ask you guys, how can you apply what you learned today on a simple level? You can physically share it, like verbally share it with somebody you know and talk to them about it. Okay, and then you personally, how would you all personally apply what you learned today? To respect knowledge, I hope that's one very good. That's like one of my main goals, to have a high respect of knowledge and the people of knowledge and scholarship in general. Like, sometimes, you know, I'm speaking about myself as well, growing up in the West, we're taught to, you know, basically have this entitlement approach that we're all, everybody's special, and that we're all equal, and that they we're all, you know, great and perfect, and my opinion is just as great as your opinion. And this is not the case. This is not logical. This is not fair. This is not respectful. You know, you don't go to a doctor, a medical doctor, and, and you know, start debating. You know, you've never studied medicine before. And he prescribes a certain, you know, cure or, or, or treatment for you. And you start debating him about it, right? It would be illogical. It doesn't make sense. You know. So in the deen, which is some of the most important thing for an individual in their dunya and the akhirah, it's the same thing. Like you, you have to have respect in the sense like the ulama have put in work, they've put in effort, they've put in time. You know, I've sat with some of them. I've been blessed, alhamdulillah, to sit with some of the ulama and seen how they live, like first hand, you know, like literally some, like some of my they would only sleep one to two hours a night, that's it, no naps during the days, you know, they would take care of their parents, 
they would take care of the poor. They would go out of their way, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, like this little this miskeen talib student, you know, coming from America that's spoiled and everything, they would go out of their way just to like make sure I'm okay or to, you know, check on me and, uh, you know, ask if I need anything, you know. And they're teaching like hundreds and thousands of people, you know. So this is like, they deserve our respect. They, you know, if they're, I've watched them, sat with them, like they're either teaching, they're praying in the night prayer, a lot of them, you know, do the extra fasting. If they're not talking, they're making tasbih, like they're like, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha Allah, Astaghfirullah, you know. And there this whole time is ilm and, and teaching and dhikr and like ibadah, you know. So they've, like I've seen some of them, they can, you know, there's like volumes of, of, of works, you know. And they'll tell you like, uh, go to this, this volume and, and, and turn to this page and, and it's on this line right here. Like he's memorized 20 volumes of... <laughs> Of 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 n, right? And it's not fair that a person, you know, he just learned the Arabic language, <laughs> he barely can, um, you know, pronounce the Fatiha correctly, and he's trying to debate with scholars or or, or give fatwas or, or or answer stuff like that. No, you should have, you know, hold the ulama in high regard. You know, فَسَأَلُ أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ. Allah says to ask the people of knowledge, if you don't, you know, if you don't understand. No, okay, so yeah, the Prophet said the three people that would be thrown into hellfire, the first three people that will be thrown into hellfire is the, you know, the scholar, the one who spends apparently in the cause of Allah, and the mujahid, the fighter. So these are three of the greatest acts of worship anybody can do. Yet these three people will be thrown into hellfire first. And the hadith, it's a long hadith, explains why. They will say that it was be said that they did all their worship, all their actions for the sake of praise of the people, you know. So that's why the scholars, they teach us to be very careful. Like when you're seeking knowledge, the main point of seeking knowledge is to lift the ignorance from yourself so you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that you can do good and worship Him correctly. How You know what's haram and halal, to do the, the good things and to stay away from the evil things, right? If you become knowledgeable enough to teach, alhamdulillah, but that's like a side thing. So the goal should not be to become, oh, I want to be like a sheikh, oh, I want to be a teacher, I want to show up, like, I want to be able to answer these questions and debate with the people. No, that's not the goal, right? If these things are given to you as extra, alhamdulillah, but you never, like, make that your niyyah, right? Same thing when you spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, this is a gift that Allah gave you, your wealth. When you spend it, you're not, you're not doing a favor for anybody except yourself. Allah doesn't need nothing for you, you know? So the, the parent can be proud of their kid, that's fine. But they should teach the kid not to be proud like of himself in the sense that you're not doing it for the sake of showing off to others. And the parent shouldn't be like doing it for the sake to show off to others. Oh, my kid's a hafa, that's why I put him in Qur'an school so I can tell everybody that my kid memorized the whole Qur'an. No, you're putting your kid in the Qur'an school so that he can learn the book of Allah and worship Allah better. You know, Some people, they memorize the whole Qur'an and they're, they're not being good Muslims. <laughs> you know, Huh? Yeah, I mean, it could, it's true. I mean, I've seen certain kids that, you know, astaghfirullah, or certain people, individuals that memorize the Qur'an, they might not understand a word of it. <laughs> but even worse than that, they're conflicting in it. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the Qur'an, hujjatan laka o alayk. the Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. And Aisha, radiallahu anha, she used to say, like a person used to come to her and ask questions, one of the uh, tabi'een. And she says, like, did you act upon that thing that I taught you? And he said, not yet. And he said, and she said, لِمَا تَسْتَكْثِرْ مِنْ حُجَّةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ Like, why are you increasing Allah's proofs against you? You know, practice what you learn little by little and then grow instead of like trying to take on too much and you're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment. So, yeah, practicing is more important than... And then the, the, this is part of the Imam's um, explanation too in terms of, of, of knowledge. Like, a little knowledge that you practice might be better for you than a whole bun bunch of knowledge that you don't practice, right? A little knowledge that you master and understand and apply to yourself might be better than like all these books that you've read and, and, and try to show off with but you don't really apply it. And Allah knows best. Allah. Khalas, we'll go we'll, uh, break for Maghrib inshaAllah and uh, if you have any questions you can always send it on the WhatsApp and then I will um, continue next week inshaAllah with the first chapter. Just 
uh, be patient also from seeking knowledge is being patient inshallah it might be difficult for some but for those who are learning the Arabic language like read along practice listen inshallah you get there okay Jazakumullah khair subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah